Hello YouTube, we're getting ready to saw the four inch hole in here with our Harbor Freight bimetal hole saws and I want to show you a little trick that I do you can either do it two ways, you can be brave or do it the safe way okay, I'm lined up on my center punch, okay with the drill bit okay, now you can hold the lever down on your quill and flip the switch on of your drill press or you can come down on that mark. If you don't want to use a smaller bit to start with, I don't like doing that. I don't like using a smaller bit. Just put some pressure, turn this by hand. Okay. You're going to see it digging. Actually, it's stuck. You almost hear it on click. Okay, we'll take a picture of that. That'll make sure you started right on your center punch because I have three marks here. I was too far that way, too far this way. I figured out the exact sweet spot. So I did not go by the actual template. I wait, waited till I built it, followed my center line down it. I've got this clamp down. I don't know if you can see the clamp over here. There's two of them. Took the vise off my table, moved this out of the way. It barely fit in here. And remember, if you're all centered from your table, things can start getting wobbly. So I said, get it centered on the mark, hold it down, tighten it. Tighten it so it don't turn. Tighten your arm back there so it won't raise or lower or move. So. Get, get it set on there, put some pressure on your little punch mark, tighten everything up, then do like I did. I just turn it by hand and started it. If you've got a brand new sharp bit, it will cut by hand. So, talked about that too much. Stay tuned and we'll show you a little action of the saw at work. Okay, we're getting ready to saw. I don't like this. I don't like this mandrel thing. You screw it on to here, right? And then you have to back this part off, and there's two pins there that go through the holes. Well, when you line up on the holes, it's never tight. You know what I mean? It's not tight the time the pins line up. You're just out of luck. But I don't like it, but that's what it calls for. Okay, I had to lower the table. Okay, so I got it centered on my bit, and when I start this, I'm going to have some pretty good pressure on it. Okay, we're going to make a little groove first before we put our cutting oil in. So hang on, this might get noisy. We'll see what happens. I'm going to have to kind of reach around the camera here. little too loud for me to be watching on film all day so you see what I said I got a little groove so then we're gonna spray our stuff in there this is foamy and we'll let it go down one more noisy time before we start cutting and we'll cut you off so you don't have to hear a couple five minutes of that see that stuff will fall the groove It's going to make a wobbly hole, but it's just a stove. Stay tuned. We'll bring it back. Maybe show you a clip right when it's ready to pop through. Okay, we're almost through. You're going to want to turn your volume down. So, what we're going to do is about 15 seconds or so. It's, I had to go hunt up my earplugs. I've been flooding this with cutting oil in here. If anything, to keep it cool. Here we go. I warned you about it being loud. Don't make too much. There you go. I don't know how centered it is, but 
there. I showed cut the hole right on camera here. Stay tuned for more. Okay, what an oily mess. Safety tip, don't grab this, even with these gloves, June, don't grab this. See that? That edge? And that, yes, that's hot. That's like a razor blade. Not lecturing. You can still see the steam coming off this. Okay, we have no idea how centered it is. Let's get rid of this. Let's grab it just enough to... And yes, I wore gloves. Don't lecture me. You wouldn't want to handle this slimy stuff. My hand was out here on the lever. Out here. Lecture me. Being defiant. Being defiant to my YouTubers. Oh boy. This is the big test. We're not going to hide this, but it's a fair oh well. It's just a stove. Okay, let's reach under here. So maybe you can get a better view of it. See if I can get you in here. What do you think? Good enough for a stove? Said even with these gloves on, you can still cut your finger. Just paper thin latex gloves. I drowned it is in oil. What do you think? Close enough? Said so always draw your starter hole with a with a bit. So you know where the hole saw is gonna start. But this thing wobbles so much. I said I don't like that. If you buy on these, you'll know that. Because there's pins in there. I do not like that at all. I may make a little thin washer out of some shim stock so it tightens up when the pins are there. This was a lot harder than when I did one with here get back in the frame. A lot harder than when I did a three inch hole. And this is only eight inch thick steel. In fact, you measure it's only like about three thirty seconds or something. It's shorter. So it's probably made with metric metric stuff now. But there you go. There's the hole cut. There may be more to this video, there may not be. So thanks for watching. That's a cardinal thing we can hear it over my fan. Okay, one last clip before we go. We did measure this. Okay, we picked like this spot. We are sixteenth of an inch thinner than over here. So that's a quarter inch. This is about five sixteenths. So no matter how good we measured. But it's just a stove. I mean I'm not going to nitpick over it. And on this curve, I thought I'd show it. We have the top sticking over. We have an inch from this hole to the stove. Well, the top sticks over about a half inch. So we'll have a half inch clearance between the round top, which would be bigger than this. And this is approximate. I do have the piece I cut out of the stove. I will lay up here and put a sharpie mark before I cut this. I saved this to the last so I can cut this to match the bottom one down in here. And one reason that was snagging is you can see them welds in there. Let's see if I can find a real bad one. This one. It was cutting into that weld. One reason I decided to make this down a little bit. I had to, I'm glad that I moved this down about an eighth of an inch. I had this three different spots. Had it too low, had it too high. I'm glad I moved it down. This is like three eighths up here. But it was kind of hard to make this. This is not exactly 45 degrees. This was all in my head of how to fit a four inch circle. And if you're gonna do this, hopefully my pictures will help. Also wanna show this. See those pins in there? There you go, see them wobbling as the light reflects? Okay, that's what I want you to do. They want you to back this out so the pins are going right. I want you to screw this on. Okay. That's why I think I'll make a shim. I want you to screw this on, and that's where the pins line up. See? We're in between the holes. That's not loose. He wants you to do that. Then go ahead and run these pins in. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, those pins. There. That pin right in there. Which I don't like. I may make a I got some brass shim stock or whatever thousands. I may fine tune this. I don't like that. It don't really matter a whole lot probably to some people. I'd rather really have a more rigid tool, so. Okay, thought I'd add that. That's about it. And then instructions tells you exactly how to do that. I'll snap a picture of it. So.
belt. Thanks for watching this episode, cutting the hole in the stove connector. Kind of stressful, but it's worth it.